Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new video on the TARDIS Zone. So Terence Dix, Doctor Who legend, has sadly passed away, um, reported in the last um, hour. Um, I'm actually good. Um, for anybody that doesn't know, um because we've got younger i've got younger uh subscribers i'll just read you a brief rundown of this uh, doctor who career um in 1968 dix was hired as an assistant script editor on the popular bbc sci-fi fiction tv series doctor who he was appointed head script editor the following year and did his first writing credit for the program when he and hulk uh, wrote the 10 part serial The War Games, which concluded the series sixth season and the second Doctor's tenure. Dix had, however, been the uncredited co writer of the earlier serial The Seeds of Death, having extensively rewritten Brian Hale's original script. Dix went on to form a highly productive working relationship with incoming Doctor Who producer Barry Letts serving as script ed editor on all of Let's Five Seasons and head of the program from 1970 to 1974. In 1972, Dix embarked on a parallel career as an author with the publication of his first book, The Making of Doctor Who, a history of the production of the TV series which he co-written, which was co-written by Hull. After stepping down as script editor, Dix continued his association with Doctor Who, writing four scripts for his successor, Robert Holmes. These were Robot, uh, Tom Baker's first outing in 1975, uh, The Brain of Morbius, uh, which was 1976, for which Dix was credited under the um, pseudonym, if I'm right, if that's how you say it, uh, Robert, Robin Bland. After his displeasure, Holmes' rewrites prompted him to request that it be shown under some bland. <laughs> he changed his name because he wasn't happy. Uh, he also did uh, Horrors of uh, it was Horrors of Fan Rock and at State of Decay, both in uh, one and night Horrors of Fan Rock in nineteen seventy seven and State of Decay in nineteen eighty. State of Decay was in fact a rewritten version of the original. Uh, titled The Vampire Mutations, which had been due for publication or production during season 15 until the BBC decided that the uh, vampire team would clash with the plot of its new adaptation of Bram Stoker's Count Dracula, which was due for transmission at roughly the same time and replaced it with the horror of fan rock. Dix penned his final Doctor Who script in 1983 when he wrote the program's 20th anniversary special, The Five Doctors, which I absolutely love. We have it there and all. It's one. It's great story. Great story. Dick's other work for Doctor Who include two stage plays, Doctor Who and the Daleks in The Seven Keys to Doomsday in 1974 and Doctor Who, The Ultimate Adventure in 1989 and an audio drama for Big Finish Productions titled come back in 2002 which was the first to feature uh, the former doctor's companion sarah jane smith in a significant capacity um the books he uh uh dix uh contributed heavily to target books the target book serials series of uh novelizations of doctor who tv serials writing more than 60 of the titles published by the company. As Dix explains in an interview on a documentary built for the war, included in a 2006 DVD release of the Santaran experiment, he serves as the unofficial editor of the Target Books range. In this role, he would attempt to enlist the author of the original teleplay to write a novelization whenever possible, but if they refused or had other commitments, Dix would usually undertake the work himself. Although he has also recruited other writers, including former Doctor Who actor Ian Martyr and former series producer Philip Hinchcliffe. On one occasion, he enlisted Robert Holmes to novelise his script for The Time Warrior. But when Holmes gave up after writing only one chapter, 
it was left to Dix to complete the work. Dix would have better success in uh, recruiting the original writers for the later Doctor Who serials and was required to adapt only one Six Doctor story himself, The Mysterious Planet. He again replaced Holmes when he died in 1986. Dick's name appears on the cover of no seven Doctor novelizations. His plans to publish a novelization of his stage play, Doctor Who, The Ultimate Adventure, have yet to be realized. During the 1990s, Dix contributed to Virgin publishing line of a full-length, officially licensed Doctor Who novels, New Adventures, which continued the series storyline following the TV cancellation in 1989. Dix wrote three Doctor Who novels for Virgin and continued to write occasionally for the franchise after BBC Books assumed the license in 1997. He wrote the first of the eight Doctor's adventures titled The Eight Doctors, which was, for the first time, the best-selling original Doctor Who novel, World Game, featuring the second Doctor, is set during the so-called Season 6B. His most recent contributions to the, to the range are quick read books ma- uh, made of steel and Revenge of the Jadun, both featuring the 10th Doctor and Martha Jones. So, as you can see, when it comes to Doctor Who, he's had such an extensive influence um i've also seen a tweet there today um it's about classic hill um i just it it just goes to show you the kind of the the mindset of certain fans out there um i mean if you don't if if newer fans don't like classic era that's fine but to actually be going around and saying you just wish you what it didn't exist and you are basically trying to get classic who removed which is never going to happen because like <laughs> bbc are not going to do that bbc know where the cash cow is actually and it's the classic era but it's actually ridiculous um the stuff you are saying now um where's this tweet um, I actually replied back to it, didn't I? And I've got a, I've got a pro Jody fan now. Like Terence Dix is dead, right? And I put put something up, and then you got at Nolz on me reading your dumb Twitter. Like, they've no respect. You know what I mean? Man has just passed away, no respect. Anyway, it was from it was from uh, someone that I followed. They were basically saying that uh, the newer fans out there are basically getting together and they're trying to get rid of Classic Who. Um, it's never going to happen. These are a bunch of clowns, if you think that's going to happen. Um, Classic Who is probably... Uh, the re- well, Classic Who is the reason why you have, even have a show now. And if you think BBC are going to get rid of that, you have another thing coming. Um, it's actually ridiculous. And show some bloody respect today, will you? And have a bit of bloody um, grace. Someone in the Doctor Who world died today and you just want to take a pop uh, at, at, at me. Like, really grow up, all right? Enough is enough. Right, listen, I'm going to go because um, I'm live later on tonight. So I'll talk to you later on at 10. I will put the live chat up. Jesus. I was going to put the live chat up like I normally do. But because the live... Oh, yeah. People have asked about the live streams last night. So, right. This is the deal. During the first live stream, I completely cut off. And what you call it? The screen and all went blank. Black. Then the same thing happened. Then right at the end of the second live stream... There's something wrong with me YouTube. I couldn't even get to get, keep them up. Um, and so I'm hoping tonight that all the issues are resolved. Um, and hopefully we can have a, a live stream that's... Um, we have no issues. But look. I will... Uh, 
I'll talk to you later on at 10. Right, I have to go now, bunch of knobs on this. Right, go on.